Good evening and welcome. This will be the Marion City Council uh, meeting. Uh, we'll call our meeting to order here. It is 5.30 on September 5th. If we would, please, uh, for a little housekeeping, uh, please turn our phones off. And if you would, please join me in rising for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, can we have roll call, please? Mr. Draper? Here. Ms. Atkins? Here. Mr. Jensen? Here. Mayor Abu Asli? Mr. Sternad? Here. Mr. Brandt? Here. Ms. Gadelia? Here. At this moment, we take a moment of silence, please. And thank you for that. We'll continue on. The first item um, on the agenda this evening will be a proclamation. This will be for the li library card sign-up month. This will be September of 2019. And if we would, uh, will somebody please join me down at the podium? <laughs> okay. Raise your right. Oh, wait, that's not what this <laughs> is. <laughs> this is a proclamation, <clears throat> and I'm very excited. So whereas a library card is the most important school supply of all, whereas signing up for a library card is the first step towards academic achievement and lifelong learning, whereas libraries play an important role in the education and development of children, whereas the library programs serve students of all ages for early literacy to homework help to GED classes, whereas librarians lead the way in creating inclusive spaces and developing diverse collections for children and people of all backgrounds to connect and learn together, whereas libraries bridge the digital divide by providing a full range of information and services to children and adult learners, whereas libraries continue to transform and expand their services in ways to meet the needs of the communities they serve. Whereas libraries open a world of infinite possibilities through resources and services to help people pursue their passions and give students the tools to succeed in school and beyond. Now, therefore, I, Randy Sternad, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Marion, Iowa, do hereby pro proclaim September 2019 as Library Card Sign Up Month and urge citizens of the City of Marion to sign up for their very own library card today. Congratulations. Thank you. At this time, we designate a particular time on the agenda for presentations. I see that there is none at this particular point. Public forum, this section is going to be for comments from the public on topics listed on the agenda but not associated with a public hearing. So this gives people the opportunity to come and speak before the council if they wish. This would be for items that will not be in a public um, opening format. If anybody would wishes to address the council, they may at this time. Okay, seeing none, we'll continue on. So we'll start with the consent agenda. Mr. Brandt. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve the consent agenda as follows. It includes items A1 through F3 and resolutions 27926 through 27958. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as follows. Items including A1 through F3, resolutions 27926 through 27958. Discussion. Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. All opposed say no. <clears throat> and the motion passes. Thank you. This brings us to the uh, regular agenda under the administration services. This is going to be a public hearing on designation of an expanded Collins Road extension urban renewal area and on a proposed urban renewal plan amendment. At this time, I will go ahead and open up the public hearing. And Mr. S City Manager, do you have anything you'd like to add to this or deputy? Yeah, we have a map here um, to put on the board if we can get the PowerPoint to cooperate <laughs> here. Okay. Um, essentially what this is, is it does three things. The first is it expands the Collins Road Extension Urban Renewal Area. Um, this is a small expansion, um, which we're about to put on the board here, um, located nor one back, uh, uh, just off of 44th Street, and it is to in encompass a development agreement that was already approved by council previously for the um, renovated building that now houses Ecolips. Um, the, the second um, area that this um, covers, this amendment covers, is to include um, the ability to enter into development agreements for three additional projects that are being contemplated later on this agenda. Um, and then the third is for uh, potential ability to um, use funds here for public improvements, and that's for the sanitary sewer associated with the Aircom Park. So this did go before the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission on August 13th, and it was recommended by the PNZ to uh, go forward and be approved by the City Council. A consultation meeting was also ha held with the taxing authorities, and we received no comments. Very good, thank you. So at this time, what we do uh, during a public hearing is we allow any of those that would like to come and address before the council. And at this time, I'll ask for anybody who is in favor of this item to speak before the council first. And at this time, I will invite anybody who has opposed this or has any additional questions that they would like to ask of the council on this particular item. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the, the public hearing. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27959, declaring necessity in establishing an urban renewal area pursuant to section 403.4 of the Code of Iowa and approve urban renewal plan amendment for the Collins Road Extension Urban Renewal Area. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27959, declaring necessity in establishing an urban renewal area pursuant to section 403.4 of the Code of Iowa and approve the Urban Renewal Plan Amendment for the Collins Road Extension Urban Renewal Area. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution number 27959 say yes. 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 All those opposed <laughs> say no. And the res resolution passes. Thank you. Your Honor, I move to approve ordinance number 19-23, providing for the division of taxes levied on taxable property in the September 2019 Collins Road Extension Urban Renewal Area Edition, pursuant to section 403.19 of the Code of Iowa. This is the initial consideration. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 19-23, providing for the division of taxes levied on taxable property on September 2019, Collins Road Extension, Urban Renewal Area Edition, pursuant to section 403.19 of the Code of Iowa. This will be initial consideration. Discussion? All those in favor of ordinance number 19-23 say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ordinance passes. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27960, approving the Marion Lofts Central Corridor Review for property located at 2274 Fifth Avenue, Marion, Iowa. This is TWG Development, LLC. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27960, approving the Marion Lofts. Central Corridor Review for property located at 2274 Fifth Avenue, Marion, Iowa, TWG Development, LLC. Discussion. 
Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution number 27960 signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Resolution passes. Thank you. At this time, we have another public hearing on development agreement for TWG, Iowa Apartment Partners, LP. At this time, the public hearing is now open. And can we get a brief yep. description of this one, please? Sure. This is a 50-unit um, apartment complex, uh, low to moderate income housing. It is located on 5th Avenue and 20. Second Street, we tried to provide uh, a little bit of context here with the site plan above. Um, I'm sorry for the reduced size of that, but it, I, I think on Tuesday you guys wanted to see exactly where it was, and we're happy to pull anything else up if you'd like. Um, this project was approved in um, earlier. Um, I'm sorry, I'm losing my spot here. This was just approved through the amendment to the Collins Road Extension Urban Renewal Plan Amendment, and the amount being authorized through this development agreement is proposed to be a cap of $400,000 over a span of up to 13 years. Any questions for her on that? Seeing none at this time, we'll go ahead and ask for the audience, anybody who would like to address the council uh, in this case, who would be in favor of this particular item, please do so by coming forward. And we'll ask you to state your name and your address, and then we also have a little gold rod card for you to fill out when you return to your seat. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's fine. Uh, good evening. Uh, Sam Rogers with uh, TWG Development, uh, 333 North, North of Pennsylvania Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you for your time this evening. We're very excited about this project. This is our second project in the city of Marion. Um, us, us anytime, that you, excuse me, anytime that we can get a state award uh, for tax credits in order to build this type of uh, development, it's a very good thing. It's very competitive, and obviously one of the major, major components in order for us to keep uh, the rents affordable is obviously the development agreement with the tax credits. So um, um, uh, we're on a great schedule right now. Uh, we plan on closing on the land next week and starting some of the grading uh, just after, and, and uh, and uh, I just hope to have the project done by next fall. So, so with that in mind, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Sure. Any questions? No, no questions, but I think just to comment, I think this is a terrific project. So I, I think your first project has, looked, has ran very successfully. Yeah, very so much. So we're certainly I'm looking forward to uh, your second one here. Yeah. So thanks for well, thank you. staying in, Marion. Thank you very much. Excellent. I will echo the, echo the same thing. It's always exciting when we have people that want to take uh, a vested interest in our community. Um, and when you can seek out uh, other opportunities at state and federal levels, it's always very exciting. So it uh, just kind of reiterates everything's moving in the right direction. So congratulations and thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else I would like to address the council in favor of this particular item? Anybody who would like to address the council against this particular item? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close this public hearing. <clears throat> Mr. Brent. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27961, approving development agreement with TWG Iowa Apartment Partners LP, authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27961, approving the development agreement with TWG, Iowa Apartment Partners, LP, authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution number 27961 signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Resolution passes. Thank you. At this time, we're moving on to another public hearing. This will be on the development agreement with GLD Properties, LLC. Public hearing is now open. And do we have a brief description on this one? <coughs> um, this is... This is the second phase of a three-phase development, the first of which was the hotel. 
um, just outside the roundabout. We provided the site plan here um, to give you a, kind of an overview of where it's at. And if you flip to the next slide, um, here's the elevations. This particular development, uh, the second phase is 12,500 square feet. It's a multi-tenant commercial building. Uh, the investment is about $3.5 million and the incentive being contemplated in this development agreement is just under 700,000 up to 12 years. This is another one of those projects that was authorized as part of the amendment as part of the initial action this, this evening. And I'm sorry, Amanda, could you repeat that? It was, what was the dollar amount? And that was up to 12 years, you said? Up to 12 years, 696,000. Perfect, thank you. So at this particular time, we're at the public hearing on this. Anybody who would like to speak in front of the council or address the council in favor of this particular item, please do so. Anybody who would like to speak to the council in or against this particular item or, or would like additional information, please come forward. Seeing none, the public hearing is now closed. Ms. Cadelia? Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27962, approving development agreement with GLD Properties LLC authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. This is for 2931 7th Avenue. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27962, approving the development agreement with GLD Properties, LLC, authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement, 2931 7th Avenue. Discussion? Um, Ms. Cadelia. Just curiosity, I know that when they initially presented, they said there was a bank on one end. We talked about it being a drive-through, but being not having a lot of humans in it. Um, but on the other end, I saw, I think, a Starbucks sign. Is that, can we confirm that? And anything else that's going in there? I'm just curious. I drive by and can't really see it too well. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Hold that one. question. Yeah, as I say. <laughs> I retract that. Okay. <laughs> great, great comment, though. Yeah, okay. I want to know what we're so getting. <laughs> we'll, come, we'll come back to that particular one. Seeing no other questions on this, uh, all those in favor of resolution number 27962 signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Resolution passes. Wow, we had a lot of public hearings. Uh, we're on to number nine here, public hearing on development agreement with GLD Properties. This will be LLC 2791 7th Avenue. Public hearing is now open. All right, so this is the third and final of the three phases for this development. It is another multi-tenant commercial uh, unit. It is approximately 8,500 square feet. The investment level was approximately 2.5 million, and the incentive cap will be, again, that sliding scale up to 12 years at this one at $504,000. And um, if you flip to the next page, this might be what, Brene, you were talking about here. You can see the drive-through around the back. This isn't very big. So perhaps, I, I don't know. perhaps we'll bring that question back up in the next item as we're in the public hearing at mm -hmm. this particular point, <coughs> if that's okay. Yep. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add to that, Amanda, before we move on? No, no this good. is just the third the uh, third and final project that was also authorized as part of the amendment this evening as well. Okay, perfect. We'll go ahead and continue with the public hearing then at this time. So if there's anyone in the public that would like to uh, come before the council to again uh, speak in favor of this, please do so at this time. And likewise, if there's anybody who would like to speak against this particular item or would like to address the council or have additional questions, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Ms. Atkins? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27963, approving development agreement with GLD Properties, LLC, authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement, 2791 7th Avenue. Second. It has been moved and seconded <coughs> to approve resolution number 27963, approving the development agreement with GLD Properties, LLC, authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues 
to the payment of the agreement 2791 7th Avenue discussion yes ma'am go right ahead yes what are we getting can anyone <laughs> confirm something <laughs> I believe the one that you were asking about has made the announcement in the CBJ. So it's um, Starbucks and what else? Your the other pie. one I don't know. Your pie. Your pie. Pizza. Pizza. The franchise? No, the pizza place. Yeah, they're out of Waterloo, Dubuque, Davenport. Okay, thank you. I don't know. Get some of the pizza. Any other discussion on this particular item? Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution number 27963 signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Resolution passes. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, I'll make a motion to approve the following hold harmless agreement. An Iowa, Iowa State tailgate block party, September 14th, 2019, at the 2400 to 2700 blocks of 28th Avenue. This is brought by Tim Troina. He lives at 2430 28th Avenue and permit number 2019-93. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the following hold harmless agreement. This will be the Iowa Iowa State Tailgate Block Party, September 14th, 2019, 2400 to 2700 block of 28th Avenue. Discussion. I'm just letting Tim know that this is now a public record. There's going to be a big party. <laughs> Over in that area, so. <laughs> BYOB. Yeah, public <laughs> public <laughs> record. <laughs> this could be this could be quite an event. Yes. <laughs> I believe it was a three o'clock kickoff too. That's right. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion on this item? <laughs> we beat it up enough. Okay. Um, all those in favor of this motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The motion passes. Thank you. I'd like to say something else, but I won't. <laughs> Go hot? Yeah, almost. The next item is going to be a public hearing regarding the 2019 fire station. Public hearing is now open. Uh, do we have anything that we'd like to present during the open form of this before we ask for anybody to come forward? I'll just walk quickly through the project. Um, so the picture that you're looking at now is the plan view. Um, showing the fire station, the two parking lots, one's a staff parking lot, one's a public parking lot. There's a wet detention basin for training. Um, here is looking at it from Tower Terrace, looking south. You can see the apparatus bay and then the headquarters where they're not only staff, but then the, the firefighters that are working or on shift will be staying to be on. For this project, we did receive 10 bids. The low bid was from Krishner Contracting at 118.6% of the architecture's estimate. It was $9,367,000. There is a substantial completion date of 8.30 of 20, final occupancy of 10.1 of 20, and liquidated damages in the amount of $1,000 per day. City Council has three options for this, this contract. They can either award it, reject it, or table it. And at this point, staff is recommending moving forward with the award. Thank you very much. So at this particular point, we are still in public hearing. I'd like to ask for any of those that would like to speak before the council in favor of this particular item. Please do so now. Anybody who would like to speak against this particular item or would like some additional follow-up questions answered, please Step forward now. Seeing none, the public hearing is now closed. Mr. Brandt. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27964, accepting bids and awarding contract to Christner Contracting Incorporated regarding the 2019 Marion Fire Station project in the amount of $9,367,000. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27964, accepting the bids and awarding contract to Christner Contracting Incorporated regarding the 2019 Marion Fire Station project in the amount of $9,367,000. Discussion. Mr. Jensen, please go ahead. Yeah, a couple of comments on this project. First of all, uh, this is a, certainly a, a very needed project. I mean, getting that fire station number three, which is now going to be designated fire station number one, 
is several years overdue. Uh, to me, there is a safety concern in response time and, and why we need to be moving ahead with the project as proposed to have a better response time for North Marion. If this were any other project other than this fire station, I would not support this. At this time, I would recommend that this should be rebid. It should be talked about for a spring start. But because of, I think, the importance and the necessity of this fire station, I will support this. I anticipate that our uh, team from the city and the team from OPN will work with Christner to do some value engineering and also keep in mind, as uh, our fire chief vocalized on Tuesday, there will be flexibility perhaps on that end date if that also can have some cost savings in this project. So if this were any other project, I would not support this recommendation. Because of what this is, I will support the recommendation. Ms. Cadet. I don't have much to add. I totally agree with Steve being in Ward 4 where this is coming and seeing the response times and the departmental reports, um, you know, as we continue to sprawl and build homes out there and uh, additional schools now. This is uh, critical and it's a safety issue. I would ask Lon to speak to um, how we will kind of fill the funding gap, if you will, because I think um, when he and I spoke about this offline, there were some um, solutions I wasn't aware of. Yeah, um, I know the chief covered a couple of things on uh, Tuesday already about looking for for grants, and um, we are going to be uh, talking with the uh, foundation about the possibility of training dollars to maybe be used towards some of the training facilities out here. But one of the things that we have done over the last several years is that we have accumulated a uh, bit of a balance in the debt service fund. And so uh, in my mind, when you look at what the debt service fund can be used for, its intended purpose, you can levy for it to retire debt. And if we use part of that balance towards the cost of this project, we can get it back down in the range of where we originally expected it to be. The long-term impact, of course, is that we contemplated an impact to the debt service levy to pay for the station. It doesn't really matter to me whether it comes out of what's in the debt service fund now, um, as long as you get that loan down to where it's at. Now, the follow-up question is where does that balance come from? Um, some of it is because of the things that we've done when we've refinanced. So, for example, when we um, we look at, at our um, debt payments for the year coming forward, we might plan to refinance a note. Well, the note that you levy for might be carrying an interest rate of 3.1, 3.2%, and as the council has seen, when you refinance it, sometimes you get it clear down into the twos. And so there's a delta there. You do that a couple of times, and then all of a sudden you have a balance built up in the debt service fund that can be applied towards future uh, debt retirement. Thank you for that. Mr. Draper, I have a question, and I learned a long time ago. You don't ask if you have enough money, but did we get the drive done at 2, and will the aerial be put, will this be its new home, Chief? I know it will not be. Uh, aerial 2 will, two will two. remain at Station 2, and that is due to the aerial being used for commercial and industrial uses most of the time. And that area, Station 2, is closer to that area. And we did get that driveway. We were having problems. Uh, yes, we've got figured out how we're going to get that fixed. Good. Thank you. Chief, I've got a couple of questions. Is Christner in the crowd this evening? No. Okay. I just was curious. I was liking to put a face to this company. Uh, there's been a lot of work to this, and I know there's a lot more work to come with this. So the, our our journey is, is just beginning here. So, again, a uh, kudos to everybody involved on your team. This this will be a, a big project uh, for us, as, as all of our projects are. But uh, when we see numbers like this, it um, causes us to pause for a moment and check ourselves and um, – this is definitely a council that's supporting this, and so that's great. We're, we're glad to be moving forward. We just got to figure out how we're going to take care of it. But uh, in the meantime, uh, moving forward will, will be great. It's what the city needs. Um, it's going to help us in our fire protection class and maintaining those low numbers as we move forward. Uh, coming from the insurance industry, this is a, a critical component for not only commercial but residential people in our community. So I'm um, very excited to be at this point <coughs> here. Your so. Honor? 
If I may add to that, Please. this may actually improve our, our insurance ratings. Okay, very good. That's good to know. For those of you that don't know, protection class ratings come up on homeowners and commercial policies uh, given their uh, ratings are determined based on location um, in your community with fire hydrants and then also to the rating of the city. So uh, communities that do not have the services that we currently provide, those numbers are higher. So those folks um, uh, endure a higher premium because the risk is higher. So um, we're lowering and limiting that risk by having these uh, services. So this is uh, something that blankets everybody. So regardless if you realize it or not, it's everything from uh, residential apartments to commercial property. So very good. Seeing no additional questions uh, from the council here, uh, we'll move forward. So all those in favor uh, of resolution number 27964 signified by saying aye, please. Aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Resolution 27964 passes. Thank you. Uh, what do you know? A public hearing regarding the removal of the railroad bridge over Marion Boulevard in advance of CMAR Trail. This public hearing is now open. So the image that's on the screen is the bridge that was in question. It's the old railroad bridge over 7th Avenue. This is in preparation for the CMAR Trail that will eventually be our new gateway bridge that will go in place of this bridge. Um, the DOT bid this project as this is a MPO project. Um, so the low bid was Peterson Contractors, Inc. at $310,524.50, 91.9% of the engineer's estimate. Again, this is bid through the, the DOT. It has the 80-20 split in funding. So the DOT pays for 80. We pay for 20 as the city. Other than the ballast that we're going to take off, that's 100% the city. It has a late start date, which was modified to 8-24-20 per the addendum number 3. And there are 40 working days, also adjusted per addendum number 3. And then there's liquidated damages of $1,000 per day. Thank you very much. So again, we are in public hearing. Anybody would like to speak uh, to the council um, in favor of this item, please step forward. And anybody who would like to speak against this or would have some additional questions that they would like answers to, please step forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Your Honor, I move to approve resolution number 27965, accepting bids and awarding contract to Peterson Contractors, Inc. regarding the removal of railroad bridge over Marion Boulevard in advance of the CMAR Trail in the amount of $310,524.50. Second. It has been moved and second to approve resolution number 27965, accepting bids and awarding contract to Peterson Contractors, Incorporated regarding the removal of railroad bridge over Marion Boulevard in advance of C. Mar Trail in the amount of $310,524.50. Discussion? Mr. Draper. I, I would like to make sure the city gets reimbursed. The scrap steel prices are up pretty high right now. And I don't know if there's any tracks up there or not anymore. If there are, I'd like the city to... Yeah, so because it's bid through the DOT. I, I'm sorry. Because it's bid through the DOT, any of the scrap would become property of the, the contractor, and hopefully they took that into consideration in their bid, and that's why we got better prices. They consider that in the bid? Yes. Because that hasn't happened uptown before. Uh, on 6th, when the track was picked up, the contractor uh, hauled some of it away, but. I don't think yeah, and actually it's very hard to, to haul rails away now. You actually have to have the city sign off on it because of some of those issues where people were taking live track out and causing issues. Okay, thank you. It's about as copper wire in your house is. Randy, you Ms. Cadelia, please go ahead. Um, yes, uh, Mike, do we, so the late start date is about a year from now. Once they take this out, does the installation of the art and the aesthetic that we approved go in right away, or is there... No, there will be some time in between that. Obviously, after we get the contract through, we'll try and push them to get this done sooner rather than later. Um, there's a subcommittee that's working on that, so that is not finalized yet. We're still working through that. 
Um, so we're not ready to install that anyways, but it's part of the, so what we're actually doing is the CMAR project actually goes all the way from the, the border of Cedar Rapids to the south and goes all the way to the intersection where the roundabout is at 7th and 7th. So CMAR, we're breaking into like five or six different phases and we're just taking it at chunks at a time to get it done. So the next phase that you actually see after we d demolish the bridge is the section of CMAR, which currently goes through Thomas Park, will be paved. Um, we actually have check plans right now that we're reviewing internally. Um, so we're just doing it phase by phase. Thank you. Mike, I had just a quick question. How are we holding up with the um, structure itself? I know that I drove by the other day. I'd seen some more rock on the ground, but I you think we'll be able to hold out? Yeah, I mean, the, the concrete is spalling. You can see that it's flaking off, but um, we'll be able to get through it. Um, hopefully, if this if we have a good winter and the contractor gets other jobs done, so this is a big contractor. They're doing 30. They're doing I-80, 380. Um, they have the equipment to do it. It's just a matter of getting free from those other projects where maybe if the frost sets in and they can't do the earth moving on other projects, then they can come in and do this project. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions? Or discussion? No, nope, seeing none. Uh, we're going to move on then to all those um, in favor of resolution number 27965, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Resolution passes. Thank you. Your Honor, I make a motion to receive, file, discuss, and refer to TAC a petition <coughs> regarding a request for a stoplight and or a rectangular rapid flashing beacon on Boyson Road and Newcastle Road. Becky Bolsinger, 2385 Newcastle Road. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve and receive and file, discuss and refer to TAC a petition regarding a request for a stoplight and or rectangular rapid flashing beacon on Boyson Road and Newcastle Road. Petition by Becky Bolsinger, 2385 Newcastle Road. Discussion? I know this request has come uh, before us a couple of times, and I know it's been um, uh, reviewed in the past, so I'm glad we're kind of seeing this uh, move forward over there with the development of, of that area. So, All right. Seeing no other uh, discussion here, all those in favor of uh, receiving and filing, or excuse me, yeah, receive and file, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion passes. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, I make a motion to receive, file, discuss, and refer to TAC a petition regarding a request for a speed limit decrease and a children at play signs on Parkview Drive. And this was brought to us by Beth Stafford at 1090 Parkview Drive. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve a motion to receive, file, discuss, and refer to TAC a petition regarding a request for a speed limit decrease and a children at play sign on Parkview Drive. This was submitted by Beth Stafford, 1090 Parkview Drive. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of this motion to receive and file signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion passes. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to receive, file, discuss, and concur with TAC. Concur with TAC report regarding additional street lights along Bent Creek Drive. Connie Suma, 625 Bent Creek Drive. Second. It has been moved and seconded to, uh, <coughs> to uh, receive, file, and discuss and concur with TAC report regarding additional street signs along Bent Creek Drive. This will be with Connie Suma, 625 Bent Creek Drive. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. <clears throat> motion passes. Your Honor, I move to approve a motion to receive, file, discuss, and concur with TAC report regarding a crossing light at 35th Street and McGowan Boulevard. This was brought by Donna McCabe at 1960 36th Street. Second. It has been moved and seconded to, to receive file, discuss, and concur with TAC report regarding a cross light at 35th Street and McGowan Boulevard on behalf of Donna McCabe, 1960 36th Street. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion passes. 
Your Honor, I move to approve resolution number 27966, approving change order number one with Rothy's Construction Company regarding the 2019 Sanitary Sewer Maintenance Project in the amount of $8,500. Second. It has been moved and second to approve resolution number 27966, approving change order number one with Drachi Construction Company regarding the 2019 Sanitary Sewer Maintenance Project in the amount of $8,500. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution number 27966 signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Resolution passes. At this time, we have a public hearing regarding the 2019 HMA resurfacing project. Public hearing is now open. So we received one bid for this project from L.L. Pelling. It came in at $1,025,331. It was 102.53% of the engineer's estimate. Um, based on previous years and the fact that we can't see what the condition is underneath the existing HMA service, we feel that we're conservative in our, our numbers and that we can keep it under the $1 million budget. Um, we have had a lot of requests for streets with the past winter that we had, so just keep that in mind when we go through the CIP and the budget session. Um, there is a completion date of 6 26 20 just because we got this out later, so hopefully they can get to some of the streets this year. If not, they'll be done in the spring. And then there are liquidated damages of $300 per day. Okay, this is a public hearing. Thank you for that. Anybody who would like to speak uh, before the council in favor of this item, please do so. And if there's anybody who would like to speak to the council against this item or have additional questions, please come forward. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27967, accepting bids and awarding contract to LL Pelling Company, Inc., mm -hmm. regarding the 2019 HMA resurfacing project in the amount of $1,025,331. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27967, accepting bids and awarding contract to LL Pelling Company, Incorporated. Regarding the 2019 HMA resurfacing project in the amount of $1,025,331. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution number 27967 signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Resolution passes. At this time, we have a public hearing regarding an amendment to the Marion Code of Ordinances establishing Chapter 176.53 of the Marion Municipal Airport Land Use and Height Overlay Zoning. This will be the public hearing. It is now open. Mr. Treharn, will you be leading us on this one, sir? This is why you're discovering why administrators and planners don't do IT. <laughs> Engineer, figure it out. <laughs> and you have achieved this one. It's an engineer. Could be something. Oh, oh my mic. <laughs> So uh, the council has been uh, briefed on the airport and land use and height overlay zoning ordinance. I Tom, Tom, I'm sorry. Could you grab your mic for us, please? Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bless you. Um, so the council has been uh, briefed on the airport land use uh, height and overlay zoning district uh, regulations as proposed. Um, I can walk through the ordinance. It's about 14 pages long, and I, and I, I guess I would start out by just asking if there were, a, if there's a desire for me to walk through the ordinance in detail, or if you feel like you have enough information to go off of um, from what you've heard in the past uh, on the details of the ordinance. I mean, I'll walk through a little bit, but uh, how much detail do you guys want to see regarding this? 
Mr. Judson. I think the area I'd be most interested in having additional detail or discussion about would be the exceptions. Sure. Uh, again, my understanding is everything else follows the Iowa Airport land use uh, designs. And so if we talk about the two exceptions, that's where I think it would like some background detail, why the exceptions are there, why we should uh, include any exceptions at all. Sure. So I'll just speak uh, primarily off this map, and I know it's difficult to see the, the, the zoning for this is hard to display because this area, um, it's, it's about half as big as the entire community, so it's difficult to really illustrate it in a drawing that can, is very visible to see the entire extent of it. <laughs> but essentially what you have are a number of different zones that are created, and I'd just like to point out that they're overlay zones. So. Uh, property in this area that is currently has a zoning district designation, so there are underlying uses that are permitted. Um, those those remain, and then the, the overlay zoning is on top of that. And so it provides a, another layer of uh, uh, requirements uh, specific to the airport. So uh, there are additional height requirements uh, based on the, uh, on the easements or the, the, the uh, these zones. So we talk about a 34 to 1 on the approach zone and the RPZs. That means uh, there's height requirements in those areas that are specific to that uh, to that district identified on the map. So if you have a, uh, a proposed building in that area and the underlying zoning says it's it can be 50 feet and the airport overlay zone says it can only be 30 feet, then the 30 feet is going to be what trumps that zoning district classifications. So you received some correspondence from Mr. McCartan relative to a, a more robust land use chart, and there was a desire to see a um, number of land uses identi identified within there. Well, because of the underlying zoning, we didn't we didn't go into great detail. We just specifically outlined the uses that where we would see conflict, and we wanted to make sure that there were, they were either compatible, not compatible, or there was additional review required for those uses. Uh, in the city of Marion. So we did go off the um, uh, the larger uh, chart that he had in, in indicated and provided for in, in his memo, but we just excluded some of those uh, uses because they weren't relative to or relevant to our specific zoning proposal. I will say th um, that we, in looking at what he had presented, we did go back and then I provided a memo to the council and did list out the residential uses and I'm, I would propose that that be an amendment to the ordinance as provided um, and that is just uh, identifying the chart of land uses specific to residential and then we laid out where they're compatible not compatible and there's additional review required I think it's on page two of the memo that I handed out um, um, so within the ordinance there were two ex exceptions from the guidebook uh, one was related to the uh, the ends of the runway or the RPZs. The council has a, an illustration that shows those uh, areas in, in great detail uh, from an elevation perspective. Um, and those are outlined specifically within the ordinance. Uh, as you'll see within the code, or I guess we, we received correspondence from Mr. Sherman relative to why we are not going uh, to completely restrict all development within the RPZs, which is suggested by the guidebook. Well, there's a little bit of history in this, and some of it I was I was not included in when the original ALP was being developed. Uh, there was a committee, and at that time there was a there there were, the committee made the recommendation not to proceed with moving in the direction of such a uh, restrictive uh, RPZ runway protection zone. So that was brought forward um, in the initial. Uh, conversations with what to do with the RPZs. Um, so uh, in addition to that, when the uh, uh, airport layout plan was presented and there was a, a decision by the council to kind of reduce the uh, length of that runway from the 5,600 feet to a 4,000 foot runway and then the, and, and not moving forward with the east-west <laughs> runway, um, that really took out a lot of the major, uh, what I would consider larger aircraft and jet craft um, that would be using the airport. So some of those concerns also were diminished a little bit just because it wasn't going to be as a robust of it or as a high caliber airport as was originally presented. Um, <coughs> so that was some of the consideration that was also made. Um, 
that being said, we understand that we want to make sure that there's no height restrictions in that area. So there was the uh, proposal to move to a 34 to 1 uh, uh, approach, which is this, the same elevation of the approach zone from the end of the runway extending out, um, which would provide for a little bit of development out there. And then we were very specific in the land uses um, that we didn't want anything that would uh, be a hazard, uh, whether it was smoke, glare, large gathering of folks, um, uh, open water where it would track birds. Um, so we did specifically outline the uses were, which were not compatible. It would provide, however, the opportunity if you had a building and you wanted the parking lot, so the parking lot could be in there. Or if you had warehouse, many, many storage where there wouldn't be a large uh, group of people there on a daily basis, but that could be provided in there. Um, if we move to the guidebook suggestion where it's free and clear of all land uses, it, it essentially eliminates the use in those areas for anything um, that would be above ground. So the parking, the mini storage um, would be difficult to do and it would be just basically uh, retained as open space or agricultural um, farm fields, which is typical as you fly. When you look around the airport, that's what you typically see as corn or beans or whatever in, in production. So we can certainly make that adjustment. There's, there's not an issue with it. And, and, and in all honesty, what Frank or Mr. Sherman brings forward is their safety concerns. And it's just a question of do we feel, does the council feel like we need to go to that degree uh, and make those free and clear of all building, uh, buildings, then we can move in that direction. Um, if, if not, we thought the approach, uh, using the approach zone uh, would be the would be an appropriate way to go as well. But it's it's uh, it's kind of at the council's discretion on that. We did go back um, when Mr. Sherman, he submitted, a, a, I think, a correspondence to the council about mid-August um, asking um, for clarification on why we were not going with the RPZs. Uh, and I did take that correspondence back to the uh, Marion Municipal Airport Committee and ask them if they, you know, based on this, is there any desire to, to revisit this? And I sent it to the chair and vice chair because I couldn't really get a conversation going offline. Um, and the, the chair emailed back and, and said he, he did not feel like there was a need to go, to go any further than the ordinance was currently going. Um, so that was a correspondence that I received back from the, the chair. But just if I can interject, that so we have a clear understanding that was based on a conversation that is not necessarily an official position coming from the airport commission as no, a that, body. Th no, no. Correct? Correct. Okay. Um, the, but they did review it and they, while they don't make, they did not make a recommendation on the zoning ordinance specific because it's not really within their purview. There was an airport zoning steering committee that met. Um, they re we reviewed the ordinance with, with that group. That consisted of uh, planning commissioners, adjacent property owners, um, and then uh, people, uh, I think two folks from the airport committee. Um, they recommended approval of it. Um, the, the committee was uh, uh, briefed on it and they supported it um, um, by motion. And then the planning commission made recommendation on it. Now, I, I will say that probably of that group, the folks that are more in tune with what that means, and I'm not trying to take away anything from this, this is just a complicated issue that normal zoning is not something, this is not normal zoning and the Planning Commission and some of the other bodies aren't normally used to working through uh, an airport ordinance. So, you know, they felt like it was fine to move forward in this direction. Clearly, if there's concerns, you know, we can move in the other direction. So what we're going to do at this time is we're going to, we are in a public hearing, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, continue with the public hearing, allow those to come forward to speak either for or against. There may be a position where I am going to decide to leave uh, or we will move to leave this public hearing open um, and then I'm going to ask that this come back up to the council uh, for discussion so that we can make a clear decision uh, what we're going to do here with this. So at this particular time, I'm going to ask the general public, those who would like to come and speak before the council in favor of this item, uh, please do so.
Good evening. Good afternoon, Council. Can I have the viewer back? Have you got the viewer? Oh, sure. Good afternoon, Council. It's good to see your smiling faces again. I'm Joe Spinks, 3165 29th Avenue in good old Marion. And I'm sort of in between on this one. Yes, I like the airport, but no, I think you're missing something on the planning and zoning on this. And I refer you back to the meeting in July 2nd where Will Brandt was the only one that stood up for the cross runway. And I think while you guys are planning the zoning for this, you need to get on with the zoning for this cross runway because I really believe that that's a much needed thing. I, uh, I refer you to this. This is a, a thing I pulled out of the internet. It's a magazine that's similar to the Iowa League of Cities for South Carolina. And this is a small city that was developing an airport. And you see what these guys said about that. It's like the industry is a huge growth potential for this. And the larger the airport is, the larger the airplanes you can bring into that, the more potential you have for growth. And so I think in this July meeting, or a June meeting, let's see, July 2nd meeting, that you took out the cross runway planning. Now, as far as planning, you know, Tom, I love to plan. I love planning. But uh, when you uh, talk about planning, and by the way, Will, I won't be enough to run your Packers game. <laughs> uh, I love to plan. And so uh, when you think about this, this uh, cross runway, you're talking about something that the people are probably not even born yet that are going to use this. You know, the, the <coughs> airport that you're planning right now will be something that you guys will see. What I'm talking about is something that w the people aren't even born yet that are going to see this. So I urge you as council to consider this cross runway and when you start doing the zoning that you plan the zoning right now so that it's fixed so that you can do it and it's not eliminated and that these uh, improvements are a uh, definite need for uh, uh, um, economic development for Marion. You've got the Economic Development Center right there next door to this. And it's a perfect opportunity to bring in larger and larger aircraft that these guys are going to need to support their businesses. So I'm here today sort of, I like your planning, I like the zoning that you're doing, but I think you're missing the boat on not doing the planning and zoning for the cross runway. So I thank you very much for your time and I'll leave you a couple of things that I I uh, file, so I'll do this for receive and file. It's great to see all you guys again. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Spinks. Anyone else who would like to speak uh, to the council? Yes, please do come forward. And uh, we appreciate all the feedback here. Frank Sherman, uh, 4170 Canton Court, Marion, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. Um, I'm in favor of zoning uh, around the airport and the overlay zone uh, as necessary for safety. Uh, and I think the staff did a, a superb job of what they did in that zoning uh, amendment. Uh, I do have one exception to it. The one deviation that Tom already spoke to uh, at the end of the runway, the runway protection zone, <clears throat> that's something that the guidebook says, and I'll, I'll quote it here if you want. Uh, zone A, runway protection zone, is intended to provide a clear area, clear area that is free of above ground uh, obstructions and structures. That's right out of the guidebook. And the guidebook was written for safety around an airport. The larger area around the airport is called an airport hazard area, and for a reason. Zone A is the most dangerous area of all. It's where the takeoff and landings occur. A fast airplane near the ground is a big issue. You have a malfunction, you don't have time to recover. You go straight ahead. So anyway, my, my point is, and if you don't mind, I'll use the, the, the overhead here also. I believe council Council has that. This is just a depiction that uh, Tom forwarded to me last night 
the green area is the runway protection zone or zone A. Uh, right near the runway, it goes out to 1,000 feet. And if you look at it right now, it is essentially undeveloped. Uh, on the north side of Highway 51, this is on the north end of the, of, of the runway, uh, it's county and it's agriculture. Uh, agriculture on the south end of the uh, south side of 51. And there is a building in the lower left corner and some vehicles. Uh, so right now it's essentially undeveloped. Uh, my premise is the guidebook says that should be clear of obstructions. Now is your opportunity to keep it clear of obstructions. You've got a flight school out there that's got students learning how to fly and it's one of the, they say, has more operations than most airports in the state for its size. Third in the state or something like that. A lot of activity, and that activity is for touch and go landings and patterns. Touch and go landings and patterns. And again, touch and goes, takeoffs and landings are the most critical. So that area is the most critical. The deviation would allow Limited development is the way it's stated, and that, in a very crude drawing, not very large, but on the, on the right, this is looking at it uh, from the side, the runway on the right, and then the end of the runway, and then the zone A that uh, goes out a thousand feet. That's the RPZ, Runway Protection Zone. What the deviation is, uh, what's being proposed is a 34 to 1 gradient. And they're proposing limited development from the ground up to that gradient. So the further out you go, the higher you can build. And that's not what's called for. Essentially, a zone A is an obstacle-free clear zone. If you do this, you have a zone A in name only. You don't have a zone A. You've got what might be co considered a zone B as far as the 34 to 1 gradient. And whether or not you have a small aircraft or a large aircraft, it really doesn't make any difference. If you have to abort a takeoff, if you land short, if you hit a structure or a tree, if you have a Cherokee 140, a small low-wing airplane, 25 gallons of fuel in each wing, you hit a pole, you knock a wing off, you cartwheel, could be a ball of flames. I hate to get into that kind of scenario, but why put something in an area where it could cause a problem when you have an opportunity now to keep that area clear? Just a few weeks ago, uh, Bonnie Roth took off uh, in a, in a tra tail drag airplane out there at the airport. She's an instructor. And she had an issue when she, they were doing a landing and a touch and go, and the landing went bad with the student. She took over, uh, tried to recover, and her statement was, in a tail dragging airplane, you don't try and save the landing, you push the power in to go around. Well, she did that, evidently hit the ground anyway, but continued the takeoff then, and had problems with airspeed and altitude. The airplane wasn't performing. She barely made it over the trees down there by the trail on the south end, barely. She kept her wings straight because when you turn, you lose lift. And she, she couldn't afford to do that. Finally, I guess she tried to return to the airport, turn, made it partially, but got down to 200 feet. She wasn't gonna make it back and she landed in the cornfield, did a superb job. But she's an instructor, you know? What if it was a student? Those trees are in on the south end in that runway protection zone. Uh, I don't want to get dramatic here, but there was another one just yesterday or today I heard on the radio, uh, somebody else landed on a cornfield near Jefferson, Iowa. Here's your opportunity to keep that area clear and safe right now. Just like uh, Joe said, now is your opportunity only this is, this is immediate. This is going to take place here within the next few weeks when you make that decision. So safety, safety first, 
you own an airport, you own that, you own that runway, it's a very municipal airport, it's your responsibility for safety. And that should be your primary responsibility, nothing else. There are secondary issues, but safety should be first. Now, there's gonna be a Packer Bears game on a little while, so I won't take any more of your time. <laughs> if you have any questions. And you know, as somebody said, until the amendment came here uh, that Tom just showed me, showed me a little while ago, you could build your tiny house out there, um, maybe 500 feet off the end of the runway. I'm sure you wouldn't want to do that, but you could do that, but not now with Tom's, uh, Tom's amendment to that. So anyway, do you, do you have any questions for me? Any questions for Mr. Sherman? Oh, by the way, uh, one more thing. I did get a call from one of the, uh, from the airport committee member who was on the steering committee. He called me this afternoon and said, Frank, he says, I think when I left that meeting, the steering committee meeting, he was under the understanding, and he thought the other guy was too from the airport committee, that that RPZ in zone A was gonna be kept clear. I don't know if they were talking on the wrong wavelengths at the steering committee, but that's the impression that he had. Okay, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Sherman, very good information. Any, anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this item for the city council? Good evening, uh, Nick Glue, President of Marion Economic Development. I, I just want to applaud our staff for the work that they've that they've done to really, I think, develop a zoning ordinance that is an appropriate balance uh, between kind of the by the books and recognizing kind of the unique environment uh, that has developed out there. Uh, hopefully, one of the reasons that you're not seeing this room filled with all of the property owners and other businesses uh, adjacent to the west is because we've worked diligently to make sure those folks stay in the loop and this zoning ordinance really mirrors how we've sought to develop uh, that park for the last several years. So uh, we've continued to have dialogue with those folks as they get postcard notifications and things of that nature, but reflection of uh, those folks not here is we've been working hard to make sure everybody's on board. So thank you for getting to this point and we're supportive of the ordinance as proposed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Glue. <coughs> Anyone else would like to speak um, to the council in favor of this item? Anybody who would like to speak against the item, please come forward or have additional questions. Okay. Seeing none, at this particular time, I'm not going to close it, but I'm going to bring it back up to the council here now so that we can have discussion. So um, anyone want to lead us off on Q&A? Yes, sir, Mr. Jensen? Yeah, love to. Uh, yeah, I've been thinking about these exceptions quite a bit, you know, for the past couple of weeks. Uh, I've talked to a few people on the staff. Uh, to get a little more information. One item that, again, I, I, I tend to lean to what Frank was talking about, about leaning, leaving the north-south uh, areas of zone A totally clear. I'm much more concerned about the north-south than I am the east-west. So if we want to provide a little leeway on the east-west for some economic development, again, I'm a big supporter of economic development, but I'm also a bigger supporter for safety. And I think that's really what we're talking about, particularly on the north-south exception that we're talking about. Because in Tom's letter here, he says the highest structure that can be built is approximately 49 feet at the furthest edge of zone A. So I can't imagine, you know, with what has been going on out there, to have a five-story structure at the end of that zone, which is supposed to be clear according to the airport land use map. The other item I would suggest that we consider thinking about with this tonight is consider tabling this tonight. Uh, the recommendation I would have is that the airport commission meets next week. I would suggest that we have them officially provide to the city council an opinion letter from the entire airport commission board, if that's the correct title, exactly on what they recommend. I'm kind of getting a mix of really what they recommend. They're the ones that are pilots, they're the ones that would understand this better. If I were to just look at it from my sp standpoint today, I say it should stay clear. I, I, I don't see any other avenue that I would consider. So I'd like to get an official letter from them one way or the other, uh, but you know, those are my two cents worth. Thank you. 
Anyone else? Mr. Draper. I, uh, I feel, I guess, stronger about the east-west. I think we need to I think that's part of our future out there, and we need to make I plans agree. on doing that somehow. So we should be buying some oil for the east-west. And, and one other comment I make, because if I understand the zone A is that it's got a combination of, uh, of north-south distance and then also east-west, correct? Yep. So again, I, I'd be amenable to a consideration of keeping it clear, maybe providing some leeway on the east-west, which gives us some more economic development opportunities. I think the most safety aspect I'm understanding is really coming from the north-south. That's why I really would like you know, some input from the airport commission to make sure we're looking at that correctly. At least that's the view that I have sure. from my seat, which is, you know, not with, with the experience of ever flowing a plane. Mr. Brent. I have a few questions. First off, Tom. So in the memo, you said 49 feet at the part of this point. How did you calculate that? Because I didn't calculate 49. I had a lower number. Yeah, and is that due I to the, the I didn't get into elevation? The, it, it has to do with the elevation. Okay. So the, the land drops off a little bit. Okay. I did I did speak with uh, Anderson Burger and engineers, and and nor, if it was if it was flat, you'd be about 29 feet. That's what I got. Be too. about okay. 14 feet at the south edge of 151 on the property. But I did reach off. out I did reach out to Anderson, but just to and so they did provide those numbers. And, okay. Um, um, so that was helpful. And then. The where does the so if the guidebook says nothing in zone A, where does the 34 to 1 ratio come from? So that's the same, um, that's the same uh, gradient from the approach zone, which is that which is the zone, um, zone B, yes, I think zone B or something. okay, so we're just okay, I'm confused now, but and then yeah, the approach zone B, B, okay, and then uh, for the, the stuff that's marked AR additional review mm -hmm. who does the additional review and is that something where if someone wants to build something in there does that come to council for approval or is that staff approval no the additional review would would come to staff and then um, uh, um, that could be uh, I believe the way that we're proposing that I would go to the uh, zoning board of adjustment for uh, an interpretation um, and uh, that would be a different board of adjustment as illustrated in the ordinance there is a joint uh, so there'd be some county representative some city representative uh, on, on that and so there would be a determined determination made by that new board so it wouldn't be the city's zoning board of adjustment it would be a new board that's created okay okay let's get in yeah, Unless Mr. Brandt, you're no, I'm good for now. taking a breath. Okay. Thank Mr. you. Yes. Um, I don't have much to add, but I would second the motion uh, Steve would make it to table it and have a formal recommendation. I think that we're dealing, we, it's a city owned airport, um, but we were just talking about the fire station in the last breath and safety is really our top concern, making sure our citizens are safe and thriving. And um, while our economic development park is out there, I, I would like a little more information and recommendation from the experts. Um, Mr. Sherman made a compelling argument. It gives me pause, so I don't feel comfortable voting tonight without more information on that. If, if I could, uh, um, if I could ask the council, so with, with an ordinance of this effect, there's three readings. So we'll be talking about this tonight at the next council meeting and then the October meeting. Mm -hmm. um, if the public hearing is left open, it still would provide for that public comment. If the first reading was made, even if there was an amendment made tonight to go to a free and clear zone A, I could bring back a recommendation from that committee at the next reading. And if there was a, a desire to change one way or the other, um, we, would, we would keep on track with three readings. And the only reason I say that is there's a couple people that spoke tonight that have been... Um, following the airport so they're aware of what's going on. Um, if the room had a bunch of folks in here that were concerned, I, I would be hesitant to, to make the recommendation, but um, if there's a way to amend the ordinance as stated, um, I could bring it back 
at, at the next meeting and we'd hold the second reading and the third reading would be the first meeting in October. Um, that's the kind of, we're trying to track that with the, uh, with the state because uh, we got some grant dollars tied to the runway improvement. So I'm certainly not trying to circumvent any public um, process, but um, even if the ordinance was approved uh, or amended to, to the degree that you're talking about, we could still get that interpretation back and then any changes could be made at the next meeting as well because it is a fairly minor yeah. tweak to the ordinance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we're still in open, open, we're in a public hearing at this point. Um, so at this particular point, I think there's, there's reason for us to pause here. Uh, I'm just going to throw my two cents in because I do have an aviation background uh, and, and family and, and I've flown planes. Um, I'm concerned about this particular area. If we've, we've all seen video footage of O'Hare International when 747s are coming down right off of, of uh, residential properties. This uh, zone A is the shoulder of a vehicle road, if you will. This is their, if they have to abort a takeoff or come in for an emergency landing, some of this space will be used in the future for part of that takeoff and landing because this is their safe zone. And um, it does concern me to, even with ramifications of, of elevations and so forth, I just, I cannot get past the point of, of taking that away. We've, we've, uh, this is at the, the infinite stages of this. Why would we want to encroach on those particular items um, in that area? So we haven't had a lot of accidents out there, but we've had two just recently, and I think it causes us to really think about this. We do own an airport now. We need to be cognitive of these of these issues, and um, these uh, this particular area, that, that bothers me. This bothers me. So um, I'm not going to be in favor of... Uh, allowing the elevations to be included in there. So, Tom, I'm going to deflect this back to you uh, because we are still in open public forum here. Uh, would you like us to make the recommendation to amend this in the op open forum, or would you like us to close this and amend it on the next item? Uh, I mean, I would defer to legal, but I, I think we can leave the public hearing open. Okay. Uh, and, and, and just make it a direct and make it a direction request from council. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Yes. So I was actually uh, going to chime in, but <laughs> Tom uh, put me on the spot there. Yeah, I think the correct procedural thing would be to leave the uh, public hearing open. That does not require a motion to table or a vote. Public hearings are opened and closed by executive authority, so it can just be left open via executive authority with the mayor pro tem. Uh, as for uh, then item two, that would be something that would be subject to a tabling because that's an ordinance. So if you want to leave the public hearing open, if you want to address item two and table it, or if you want to view it as a moot point, um, my personal opinion, I think the smarter uh, road to take on that is uh, to address it and table it. Uh, that way... Um, that way, as these amendments need to come, uh, they can be done. So another option would be um, not to address it. And if this is going to be subject to amendment, we just republish it all. Dep okay. Particularly if this is going to involve some substantial amendments, uh, there's a question as to whether we'd be making too substantive of an amendment anyway, uh, that it would run afoul of, of some open meeting rules by uh, trying to, you know, sweep it in under this, under this, the existing uh, published ordinance. Sure. So for clarification then, um, it would be permissible then for us to just strike it from the agenda this evening. Is that correct? Table. Uh, those, those are two mm -hmm. different items. There. Either one. I would like to, uh, I um, guess I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of trying to gauge the, the temperature of the council here. Sure. If, if what I'm hearing from the council is you're wanting some pretty substantive changes, then I would recommend that, uh, that you just n strike it or just, you know, make it a moot point. Don't don't address it. It will drop off. It was not considered on the agenda. Um, it doesn't require reconsideration or anything like that. Then when we have the amendments that are proposed by counts or by uh, staff, uh, we can just republish the whole thing. I know that pushes us back in terms of the time frames and when we can get this done, but. Um, Again, if we're talking about some pretty substantive changes here, and it sounds kind of like we are, uh, that might be the safer route to go. 
Randy, if I may. Yes. Just one comment I do want to make with the DOT agreement that we signed for the funding to, for the reconstruction, none of that money will be reimbursed until the ordinance is in full effect. So this project starts on Monday. So that's why we started the project. We felt comfortable moving forward at that time. So I just want to make sure that you guys understand the full implications if you do table it, which is under your guys' purview. But if you table it, there's a chance that we may not get all the grant funding because if we've already constructed it and there's nothing left to reimburse by the time the ordinance is in effect, we will not get that money. So I believe that's $470,000 that's on the line. Is that all or nothing? It just, yeah, basically they will not reimburse anything until the ordinance is in place. So we've already, if we've already built all the improvements and then the ordinance gets passed, we get nothing. Clarification. So we may have just found ourselves in a position here where we've, with all due respect, we've moved into a position where you have now put your council in a position that we need to maybe recheck that. Uh, I just want to make sure you know the implications of it. Right. And I'm explaining it back to you. Your council has not approved something and we've got shovels ready to go on the ground on Monday. Incorrect or correct? Correct. Shovels are moving Very in good. on Thank Monday. Thank you. Okay. Just so we're all on the same page here. Yes, sir, Mr. Jensen. Can I get a point of clarification, Ryan, <laughs> in, in that is the change, is the p possible amendment we're talking about, which is modifying some wording in that one exception, is that substantive enough that that would really be an issue? I mean, we're, we've got, you know, 17 pages of rezoning here. We're talking about changing a couple of sentences, so is that that major that we possibly, as was talked about, we could vote on it tonight and then still amend it in two weeks? If that's what the city council wants to do is to make zone A uh, a clear zone. To be clear, if, that, if that's the course that the city wants to take, the council wants to take, they can do that. Um, the only thing that I was pointing out is a potential problem, again, um, when you're talking about these substantive changes, usually it's not a it, it's not a qualitative difference; it's a quantitative difference. How significant? What's the degree uh, to which we're making this amendment? Is it significant enough that uh, it's going to you know rankle somebody or not? I don't know. I don't have that kind of that kind of prognostication where I can say that oh yes, this is. This this entity, this body is going to get a hold of this and say this was uh, improperly done. They may, they may not. I don't know. Obviously, you know, city attorney, I'm always going to advise caution. So um, take that for what it's worth. Um, if the council believes that it is not that significant of a change, I've had councils disagree and think that it's not that significant of a change and they've moved ahead. And to me, it doesn't seem that significant from the standpoint that that change does not affect any landowners around there or current business owners. Uh, we're just talking about a safety aspect. Uh, maybe future building way, way down the road, but uh, I don't think it affects any immediate landowners or uh, investors anywhere. And, and that would be within the council's purview. Yeah. It's, that's discretionary with the council. I just wouldn't be doing my job, I don't think, if I didn't advise you that that was a potential issue not saying it's a probable issue or you know that you're absolutely prohibited from doing this it's something that could be an issue okay. i don't feel like it's substantive enough to do that i mean I, if, it, if yeah. we're making that call I, I agree that it's some words in a letter of a number of a section right yeah i'd, I'd be i'd be okay voting on it tonight as long as we have the opportunity to amend it in two weeks. And that's my understanding that that's the position we're in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. As long as you approve it. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I understand. If you go to the second. The second to your amending. Oh, we're still in public yeah, hearing. Yeah, yeah, we got the, yeah. yeah, we're still okay. in public hearing now. Uh, well, if, if yeah. I can. I got all public Mr. Hearing yeah. Yeah. Mr. Tr Mr. Trahern, go ahead, please. The, the other option, and just may, maybe it's better to do this once the ordinance has been read, but would be to, to amend the ordinance to remove 
to deviation and, and adopt consistent with the guidebook that way? I mean, because I think the deviation itself is is um, probably how would I say? If you were adopting consistent with the guidebook and you were proposing to amend the ordinance to deviate from it, I think you would be moving in a different direction opposed to or removing a deviation and going in conformance with the guidebook. Does that make sense? So I, I think that even kind of makes it a little easier from the perspective of what we're doing as a part of the ordinance. So You're assuming the majority of the people on the city council want to get rid of that deviation. Correct. And that's what you're, and I don't know where everybody stands up here. <laughs> I haven't heard that. I would certainly, I would concur with that to remove that deviation. That's where I am. Um, being in lots of touch and goes as a passenger um, in my prior life, I can tell you that it does warrant pause that we would develop anything within that, that zone. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Mr. Sherman really did provide some good insights and some good support for that. So um, that's where I am. I, I would vote that we remove that current deviation and um, I would vote. Yes, for that. Mr. Draper, can I get a consensus on you, sir? Yes. <laughs> Do you concur? I mean? Do you concur? Yes. With me removing the deviation. Mr. Brandt? At this point, I do not, okay. um, only because in my mind, what I see is zone A is kind of what Tom talked about, a parking lot, um, no, no major structures being built there. But that would be, and that's why I asked who has that, has, has that, uh, you know, who does the additional review because I think that's that's important for what could be built there in the future of, of who's making that making that decision because if we put it in there that uh, if it was in the ordinance that you know that parking lots nothing, maybe adjust that 31 <laughs> 34 to 1 to something shorter too um, just because of the development that could occur around there I, I, it's taking it completely away where the parking lot is not going to in my mind, affect the safety. If you're making a landing on a parking lot versus a cornfield, I think it's safer. Well, what's in the parking lot? Uh, you would be limited the to plates. Lot. Good question. And other structures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think flying an airplane a thousand feet is not a very long distance. You know, when you're flying an airplane at those speeds and you're coming in, so I mean, I, 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 I would have to in favor of eliminating it from the standpoint of that's what the original airport land use design was uh, incorporated for and it's there and brought about for by a lot smarter people than me so <laughs> Ms. Cadella, did you have anything or yeah I mean I I would agree with removing the deviation leaving the public hearing open so we can have the first reading and then awaiting the next meeting so we have a recommendation from the experts before we would then put the deviation back in should we choose to do so. So at this particular time by leaving this open, requesting the this to be amended, does this hinder then our grant? No. no. It would be it would be considered the first reading. Okay. So we would whether still. whether you read it and adopt it as proposed or amended it would be the first reading okay so we won't lose that window for the application okay okay so at this time uh, we'll leave this open um, at this time and, uh, and I'm, I apologize I'm gonna go back and ask the question then then um, do we need to be addressing the 19-24 um, or do we I'm still out my me as the jury trying to decide here do we read it or do we strike it well it sounds like you're going to do your first reading of it and then uh, with council's direction staff will come back for the second reading with some possible suggestions for potential amendment okay so if we, I'm, if we I'm will reading what council wants now. to do correctly so we will not be um, tabling 1924 correct no we won't be tabling it. Now, whether you want to move to amend it now or whether you want to just read it as is and then have Tom come back at the second reading with potential proposals for what that amendment would be. I mean, I guess if you amend it, if you amend it now, it sounds to me like you're amending it without what 
the specific language is that you're going to put in it. So Correct. I don't think you want to amend it now. I just think you want to do sure. your initial reading. Okay. Very and good. Potentially we'll at the second reading. I'm fine with that. Okay. Well, we will uh, proceed then. Mr. Brandt, would you like to uh, continue sure. us on, please? Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve ordinance number 1924, amending, a Marian, ma amending the Marion Code of Ordinances, establishing chapter 176.53, Marion Municipal Airport Land Use and Height Overlay Zoning <coughs> Initial Consideration. Second. It has been moved and second to approve ordinance number 19-24, amending the Marion Code of Ordinances, establishing chapter 176.53, Marion Municipal Airport Land Use and Height Overlay Zoning Initial Consideration. Discussion? So I want to be clear. If we vote yes, then we can amend it next time. Is that accurate? Right? Take, take that out. Yes. That is right? correct. Okay. Yes. Just wanted to be crystal clear. Yep. Nope, that's, 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 that's very good. Yep. Glad you're asking. Any other discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor of ordinance number 19-24 signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Ordinance passes. Thank you. Ms. Cadell. Your Honor, I move to approve resolution number 27968, approving an acquisition plat associated with part of parcel A, plat of survey 1476, and this is on behalf of the City of Marion. Second. It has been moved and second to approve resolution number 27968, approving an acquisition plat associated with part of parcel A, plat of survey 1476. This will be City of Marion. Discussion? Real quick, because I'm Mr. blanking. Brett? Real quick, I'm blanking what this was, sorry. Big picture. <laughs> um. You can just say the address. Or where uh, it is. It's, it's the adjacent property of the fire station that provides oh, for the right, right away associated right. with yep. uh, Mooney Engel on it. Mooney yep. Engel. So uh, whoever was going to build first would have to get the easement. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Right. I couldn't yep. think of no what problem. it was. <laughs> That's all. Any, Any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution number 27968 signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Resolution passes. Thank you. At this particular time, we have uh, a library fiscal year end update. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I have some show and tell, so I'm going to get a little situated here. Um, thank you for uh, allowing me to provide you guys with a year end update about the library and where we've been over the last year. Yesterday was my one year anniversary. Congratulations. Congrats. Really fast. Wow. Yes, thank you. It's been a wonderful year. We've had a lot going on as Mayor Pro Tem provided the proclamation for Library Card Sign-Up Month. I thought I would tell you first a couple of things that we have going with the Library Card Sign-Up. This is a national Library Card Sign-Up that happens all across the nation. And here locally, we're trying a couple of different things. We're doing business outreach and going out <coughs> to uh, businesses in the community <coughs> and talking about the library and allowing opportunity to register st staff and, and really whoever, customers that may be in the businesses, giving them the opportunity to register for a library card. In addition, we're piloting a new time for the library to open. Right now the library opens at 9.30, Monday through Friday. Uh, actually, <laughs> Monday through Saturday. Uh, we open at 9.30. Um, this varies across the Metro Library Network over at the Lab Library in Cedar Rapids. They open at 8. The Downtown Library opens at 9. We open at 9.30. Hiawatha opens at 10. So we're kind of all over the place um, across the Metro Library Network. But one of the biggest things that I have heard, biggest pieces of feedback that I've heard since I started was uh, folks in our community feel like the library opens too late. So for them to celebrate Library Card Sign Up Month and to kind of test out what early mornings would look like, we're doing something that is cutting edge, I think, for the state of Iowa in general. I was speaking with the state library today. We are allowing self-service hours at the library from 8 a.m. to 9.30. So what this means is patrons can come into the library and do the stuff that they do every morning when they're waiting to come in. They can read the newspaper. They can get on the computer. They can pick up their hold. They can browse the stacks and check out their materials using the self-check machine. They can make copies. They can fax. They can do all of the, the things that we don't need staff intervention for. And if 
they need anything further, we do have staff that are in the library and milling around. They can always ask for help. But generally every morning we have about 30 people that are waiting to get into the library. They do the same thing every day. We know them by name. They know us by name. They don't really need staff to do the things that they're doing. So we're doing a pilot to celebrate Library Card Sign Up Month. Each of the managers of, um, on the leadership team are setting up a little station every morning at 8 o'clock, making sure that few folks that are coming in early have a library card. They will have, a libra have to have a library card to do the majority of the self-service. So if it goes well, we're taking stats every morning to see how many people are coming in. It's something that we'll look to consider to do ongoing. So folks can continue to come in and do their business on their way to work, maybe prior to school, whatever they need to do. And uh, it allows us to provide more access to a public building. So we're really excited about that. The first day, Tuesday, was our most popular day so far this week. We had 37 people that showed up before 930. And it's just kind of been steady all week. So we'll continue to provide an update on that as we go through. But we're very excited about that. The year has been busy. Uh, we have had a lot going on. I've met a lot of people. I've learned a lot. I'm continuing to learn a lot. And gotten a lot of good feedback. Good feedback, good guidance from you guys, from staff, from the community in general. And one of the things that we heard loud and clear from not only council in some of our special meetings, but lots of other folks, is that we need to get a lot more information out about the library. So uh, I hope you have this handout up front. Uh, Rachel was assisting me in getting that out. But this is going to be an annual report that we send out now coming in next week. Hopefully with by the end of next week it will be ready to go. Please note that this is very, very rough draft. So you may still find a few spelling errors, and this is going to be annual report 2018-19. Thank you, Rachel. Lots of um, things that we still need to do in here. And this will be a shiny booklet. It will look very much like what you would get with a Marion Messenger. It's going to be a stapled, middle stapled booklet, shiny, really nice professional looking that will go to every resident in the Marion, um, in Marion. So every resident will get one of these in their mailbox. Um, thanks to the Friends of the Library that helped us with this publication. As we discussed in one of our prior special meetings, this type of, of mailing is not in our annual budget. We'll be working to, to put that in there, but really proud of this document. I'm not going to go through all of it with you, but I do want to point out that this year we have started to revamp a new strategic plan. So on that first page under my, my welcome and thank you there, you will see that our new mission at the Marion Public Library is to ignite possibilities. And under, um, just up to the top there, you can see that our vision is we seek to be the spark that lights the way for imagination, growth, and education for our community. Underneath there, those boxes that start with we welcome everyone. Uh, in a lot of organizations, they call this our values, and we are calling this our commitment to the community and each other. So these are the things that we are committing to the Marion community as well as each other as staff. So you guys can look through that. And then the other one that I want to bring up that I'm most excited about here, and I don't know how to do this, <coughs> but to show everyone, this is our story um, by numbers. So you can see here that in the last fiscal year we provided 491 adult programs, 268 young adult, which is our teen programming, 362 children's programs. We registered 2,622 new cards at the Marion Public Library. As you know, across the Metro Library Network, we have 75 Wi-Fi hotspots that allow that we allow checkout for, and we circulated 1,174 Wi-Fi hotspots. We had just over 300,000 patron visits, again, which kind of supports that, that data that we put out, that we have about 1,000 visitors per day that come into the library. You can see our computer usage there continues to grow, as well as um, one of the big areas, 912 public meetings took place at the library this year. So as we continue to look towards our future and the space that we need in the library, that's a big driver of that as well as 3,339 folks used our study rooms for some, um, shape, in some shape, form, or fashion throughout the year. So very exciting numbers for us that continue to grow. The American Library Association has a value calculator. And what that does is it takes some of these <coughs> services that we're looking at here. So for instance, if you had to rent a public meeting space to have a public meeting, there's a value that they have associated with that that's sort of standard standardized across the, the U.S. 
how much would it cost you to buy a book versus to check out a book from the library. And so all of that put together, there is a valuation calculator that libraries use to talk about all of the services that we provided on an annual basis and what value we have given back to the community. So here, I'm very excited and proud to say that the library has um, delivered $10.5 million, $10 million worth of service back to the library based on the valuation of what those services would cost in the public market. So a really great, I hope that's a great number for you guys too, of the services that we're providing to the community and I'm very excited to do so. So hope you enjoy looking through this. It will come to your mailbox and it'll be much prettier and hopefully a lot less spelling errors. I just wanted you guys to have a chance to see some of the feedback that we've gotten and what we're doing to work towards that feedback. So very exciting to work, uh, to work on those types of things. The, um, the year for me has also brought just a ton of feedback. I, I get really kind of, um, I don't know, moved by the, the feedback that we get daily. I'm um, Just this week I have a couple of pieces of feedback um, I'll share with you guys that came through my email. This one will be a little bit hard to read, but this is a woman from Anamosa who says that she visits several libraries um, across the course of the year and that we have created a wonderful, friendly, helpful library. It's always a pleasure to visit because the staff seems so kind and enthusiastic about their library. I just love coming in and always feel so welcome. Keep up the wonderful work that you're doing. We have a couple of other notes about a five-year-old who was just running through the library this week screaming, I love the library, <coughs> I love the library. <laughs> and it's great to get these emails and to get the feedback in this way, but for me the best part is when I'm standing there and someone comes up to me or I see it happen. So Kelly, uh, the deputy director, and I try to open the doors to the library every day together and greet the people as they come in. And we had a gentleman just last week that came in and he walked in the door and he just kind of stepped back and his mouth got really big and we were like, oh my gosh, are you okay? <laughs> and he said, yes, I haven't been in here in a long time. And we have a new display wall that shows all of the new books face out. And he was like, I cannot believe this. This is fabulous. I'm just blown away. So those are the ones that always mean the most to, to us when we get to experience it with those folks um, real, real time like that. So that's a little bit uh, about what has happened in this past year, and you guys can continue to, to look through that. I also wanted to just do a little bit of show and tell about some new things that we have coming into the library. And you guys are going to get super distracted. I showed these at staff, at lawn staff meeting this morning, and I lo we lost everybody. <laughs> so I will pass these guys around. I'll meet you again. Tell me about something my grandkids are going to like. All you ever say anything like that? So we're <laughs> so we're excited to bring these new devices to Marion for the first time. These are called launch pads, and these are self-contained devices that do not require Wi-Fi. One of the things that we know is that Wi-Fi these days is needed to do a lot of things. However, we don't always have Wi-Fi in the car, on airplanes, um, it, you know, out in parks, different things like that, depending on where you are. So these are uh, devices that are preloaded with um, academic learning type of uh, apps, like kids see uh, very high-tech apps that they see um, on our regular mobile devices. They all have um, different topics. So we have discovery days and building and some are trucks and fire engines and all of that good stuff. Some are princesses, some are animals and they're all they're all graded. So the ones that you guys have, I have one that is kindergarten through second grade and I have one that is pre-K to kindergarten. So these will, we are getting 30 of these um, for our children's collection. You will be able to check them out just like books for three weeks at a time. And we're super excited. We know that they're going to be um, a big hit in the Marion community. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's really important to me and, and our library and I know to our community is uh, access and making sure that everyone has access and equal access to different types of things. Uh, a lot of children these days get bullied because they don't have the same technology as their peers. And this is a way that they can have their technology out and about and, and kind of create that equal ground without having to have Wi-Fi or phone service or any of that stuff. So we're really excited about that one. In addition, the same company, this is the one I think you guys are going to be excited about, the same company uh, creates this little guy called a Play Away. 
So some of you may have seen these with your kiddos. They have these in the Linmar School District. This is a little cartridge guy here. It has a play and a stop, and I can pass this around. This is a, a book on tape or an audio book. All you have to do is to plug in your uh, earbuds, and it will be, uh, you'll hear the audio book. You push play, it oh. takes a little battery. You can also plug it up to the audio cord that goes to your car. If anybody has bought a car recently, they don't come with CD players anymore. <laughs> I was a little dismayed by that. But anyway, very lightweight. I'll start with Mr. Draper. Easier than my mine? Totally easy. All you have to do is push play, so it's great for the gym. <laughs> Again, no Wi-Fi if you want your children to listen to a book in the car. Airplane, workout, walking at your desk, great way to use them. They do have these at the Cedar Rapids Public Library, and they're wildly uh, popular. We will have a little bit of a, a, a more advanced collection here in Marion. We are going to have adult, teens, and children playaways. So we're really excited. We're getting um, 200 of those. So that's an opening day collection. And big kudos go out to our foundation, our library foundation, who has provided the, um, the money, the seed money for us to get started with that. So those are coming. They should be in the library in a few weeks. One last upcoming, see, I knew we'd lose them. <laughs> One last upcoming uh, thing that I wanted to talk to the council about and make sure that everyone hears about is the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. So hopefully you all have a, this handout as well. The Dolly Parton Imagination Library um, is sponsored by Dolly Parton herself. And what this does is it allows for us to provide a book collection for children zero to five years old they get a free book once a month in the mail for the first five years of their life. So by the time they're five and entering kindergarten, they have a library of 60 books that they have been given through the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. These are contained to municipalities. So for us, we are looking to our friends organization to become the affiliate because they look for a nonprofit organization to do that. So the Friends of the Marion Public Library are considering becoming an affiliate of the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. They will partner with us with the, um, through the library and we will be sending out registration forms to all of the families in the 52302 zip code and anyone who registers a child between the age of five will get into the program and will be able to get one book a month until they reach age five. The books come in the mail with their name on it, um, they're personalized, for each child that is registered in the system. So this is a really awesome, awesome program. Just so you know, um, this is a nationwide program. A lot of people know about it. So if they move to Marion and they know about it, they'll go in and research Dolly Parton Imagination Library. And if they don't have one, they can be on the wait list. We already have about 150 people in Marion that are on the wait list for the Dolly Parton Imagination Library to come. So we're really excited and thankful that our friends organization is considering becoming an affiliate and allowing us to, to bring this great resource to our Marion families and the kids that are here now and the ones that are to come. Sure. So super exciting things coming in that regard. Any questions about those few things? So there's no cost if we end up doing this project? Well, there is cost, okay. but the friends will be the ones um, as the nonprofit that will be looking to fund it. The really cool thing about the Dolly Parton Imagination Library is it costs $25 to sponsor a kid for the year. So super easy to fundraise for when you go out to donors and say, hey, I need $25. You can get it, 12 books for the kiddos. Each book is ten, uh, $2.10 a piece. And so all of the mailing, all of the book selection, all of the packaging happens by the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. All we are required to do locally is to have our friends organization and our fundraising kind of arm raise <coughs> the money to help supplement the cost and then sign people up. So kids, very exciting. Kids can sign up now for this? You can sign up now and become, be on the waiting list. The waiting list. Waiting list. And the other really great thing is grandparents can sign up kiddos, aunts and uncles. As long as you're signing up someone that has an, a 52302 address or is affiliated with someone with a 52302 address, it counts. So exciting new things coming. In addition, just a, a reminder that we're continuing to work on our mobile library project as well as the building project. Monday we have a proposers conference to 
as the first step in our selection in our RFQ for a construction manager. We have steering committee that's already been put together for that building project. Just as a reminder, uh, Councilman Brandt and Councilman Jensen have agreed to serve on that um, steering committee as well as three of our library board members. Brooke from the Uptown District. We have um, Mike Barkalow, Tom Treharm from the city as well as Leanne. In addition, we have two adult citizens and I'm working with the mayor and Amber to bring in a couple of our youth um, from the mayor's youth council to serve on that steering committee as well. So I know that was a lot. Thank you for your patience and allowing me to give you a little bit of, of what's been happening at the library this year and what's to come. I'm so, so happy to be here and I can't wait for all, all the years to come. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you, Holly. We appreciate that. A lot of exciting things coming on uh, online here and changes um, about in our library. So thank you. Thank At this you. time, we have a set aside public forum. This is for uh, time set aside for uh, comments from the public. If anybody would like to address the city council, uh, you have the opportunity to do so at this time. Seeing none, we'll continue on. Uh, this will be uh, council discussion time. We'll start with Ms. Cadelia. Would you like to lead us off? All right, very good. Mr. Brandt? Go Packers. <laughs> Mr. Jensen? I'm good. Wow. Ms. Hedgins? I'm good. Mr. Draper? No, oh, you know, there's always something. Else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much. It's been a busy week for me, but I would like to have those two of you who would remember uh, waiting in line for food on 10th Street on a Friday night. And we're going to talk about that next week, and I just want to let you know that. And also, there was uh, Marion's first pizza house was on 10th Street. Um, <laughs> Steve used to remember that. And anyway, that's all I have. Next week, we're going to take a 10th Street lesson. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. I'd like to extend a thank you to the uh, individuals that would helped out on the uptown uh, area here um, in the last couple of days uh, of all your hard work in cleaning the uptown, um, all of the volunteers along with all of our uh, committees throughout the city. So, Mike, also two of my apologies. I wasn't getting excited at you. I just understand that we're up against the time clock on, on some of those things. So, anyway, with that particular uh, item, we are adjourned. Thank you for coming. <laughs>